Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about four things you gotta get right in underwater photography. And if you master these uh, four things, your above water photography will get better too. Four things are exposure, focus, color, and composition. There's a few unique things about these four things in underwater photography we're gonna talk about. The first is exposure. In exposure, uh, oftentimes above land, people really get tripped up on good exposures. A lot of people shoot in program and audio mode, and there's a lot of talk about people getting out of that or getting away from that in above, uh, above water photography, and that's fine because it's much simpler. Your feet are on the ground, you're in an environment you really understand, and uh, fine-tuning your exposure manually or with shutter or aper aperture priority mode is something that people want to, uh, to arrive at, to mature into, which is good. Underwater though, you're in such a different environment, my recommendation for exposure is to let the camera do most of the thinking. And what I mean by that is if you're in program or in some kind of automatic mode in your camera, don't sweat that. My goal is not to get you out of that mode in this course. Now, if you're an advanced photographer already and you want to manually control your exposure by either exposure compensation, which is where you simply tell the camera to overexpose or underexpose a little bit, or you want to go into full manual and set your shutter speed and aperture yourself, that's fine. I'll give you a quick recommendation if you're there. If you're going to shoot up at a subject so that you're shooting into the light, you're going to want to tell your camera to underexpose a little bit because the background is so bright. If you're shooting down at a subject or with the light to your back, you're probably going to want to tell your camera to expose a little bit over, a little overexposed. The same thing goes if you're shooting into a dark coral background. In order to get the right exposure for your subject, which might be a brightly colored fish, you might have to do a little adjustment. Generally though, for exposure, my recommendation is leave it alone. Cameras are getting way smarter and you don't need to complicate things when you're getting started by messing with your program modes. So the next thing is focus. In focus, that's one of the most important things in any image and I'll tell you why. It doesn't matter how well your exposure, color, or composition, the other things, three things I'm going to talk about are if your focus is bad. Really, out of focus images only have one place, and that's the garbage can, the trash bin, or digitally deleted off of your computer or memory card. Nobody likes an out of focus picture. They're just not usable for anything. In underwater, this is important because a lot of times people will try to take pictures of quickly moving fish or subjects, things that are moving rather quickly by. And your camera, there's less light underwater, so your shutter speed will be a little slower. Now if your shutter speed is a little slower, and your subject or you are moving, your images are going to be a little blurry. That's a problem, because blurry images are out of focus images which aren't going to do you any good. No one likes out of focus images. So what do you do? What's the answer? Well, simply put, you want to Make sure you're not moving, or moving much, and make sure that your subject isn't moving, or isn't moving much. So, let me give you a few suggestions. There are certain animals and objects underwater that are great at not moving. Reefs don't really move. Rocks and coral ledges don't really move, so they make for great subjects, or as part of a composition. There are some animals and wildlife underwater that don't move much. Uh, clownfish and anemone fish tend to stay in a single spot. A turtle can be resting and could be in a single spot or moving slowly. Um, there are some animals that live on the bottom that move very slowly as well. And some fish, particularly like a barracuda, smaller barracudas, that tend to kind of stay and hover in one spot. Same with like a coronet fish. So anyway, you don't have to get wrapped up on what each one of these different animals are, but realize that underwater there are some animals and living things that don't move quick if they move at all. So my recommendation is to look for those things. Don't try for the fish darting across your camera because it's going to be blurry. Try to find subjects that are largely stationary. This is going to really help your underwater photography. Guess what the other thing that can be really stationary underwater is? The guy or girl who is with you in the water, your buddy. If you can talk to your buddy and coordinate a picture ahead of time with them perhaps next to a nice piece of coral reef or just them in an interesting position, well guess what? Now it's going to be in focus because nobody is moving. I'd highly recommend you look into situations like that 
Because unless you're going to bring your light down with you, unless you're going to have a big strobe, you're going to have a hard time with focus. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is color. Color on land is easy because the light is great. It reflects all of the colors back to the camera. The issue is underwater, water tends to filter out light. Start with the red in Roy G. Biv and work your way down. The deeper you go, the less of those colors you'll have. It's to the point where at about 10 to 12 feet, you've pretty much lost your reds already. This has serious implications for your underwater photography. What it means is that the deeper you go, the more color you lose. There's two options to get good color in your pictures. Can you guess what they are? Well, those two are that you can either stay close to the surface or you can bring some light down with you. That light you bring with you can either be a steady light, a very bright and steady light, which generally for underwater photography is not what's done, that's for underwater video, or you can bring down a strobe, which is like a flash that's meant for underwater. My recommendation, if you're going to invest in any underwater gear after your case, is to get a strobe because you can get amazing colors and images with some pretty simple strobes that sync up automatically to your camera. Now, Cameras do have flashes a lot of times, and those flashes will function underwater. The problem is, you'll get a lot of backscatter, meaning that the flash will fire, and as it fires, everything in front of it will reflect all the particulate in the water, and it's really close to your lens, so it looks really murky. Now, the reason that an off-camera flash works better is because it's got distance between it and the lens, so as the light shines down, the water doesn't give you all that backscatter generally. And that's why I'm going to recommend that if you're going to pursue underwater photography, you do get one of those strobes. Now, if that's not something you're interested in, that's fine. It'll still work just great the way it is. Just realize you should stay in shallower waters and check your images after you take them to check the color in there. The last thing we're going to talk about is composition. Now, composition is one of those things that if everything that I just talked about is in order, a good composition can really make an image. So, in order to get a good composition, you need a few things. The first is a subject. Usually in underwater photography, that's pretty easy because you'll have decided on something you want to take a picture of. Now, once you've decided on what that thing is, it's best if you can incorporate other objects in a good, uh, a good mix in your image. So let me give you an example that I really like to use. If you are taking a picture near a coral reef, the best thing to do is find a nice colorful piece of coral that you can camp out near and wait for a fish to come by. Now the fish is your subject and the coral is part of your composition. The other part of composition that I want to mention is the rule of thirds. It's a really simple rule that basically says if you're going to take an image of a subject, which you should always have a subject in mind, don't put the subject in the middle. Have it offset by a third. Bottom third, top third, left third, right third. What that does is it gives your image a sense of motion and meaning. It's almost more of a story when you've got it in off of the center. And the center tends to be a little less interesting in images. So my strong recommendation, if you can at all avoid it, is to not put your subject in the center of your images. So use the rule of thirds and other objects you find underwater to create interesting and stunning compositions. By doing this, you'll avoid the classic one fish picture in the middle of a blue ocean. Now, some people do that really well, but generally, that's not the most interesting picture. More interesting pictures are like this a diver next to coral reef, a fish next to coral reef, two fish interacting with each other, maybe a turtle and a wreck in the background. These are all examples of some great images and compositions that as you're developing as an underwater photographer, you should be thinking about and about how you can do them better. So if you can get those four things right in your images, exposure, focus, color, and composition, you're going to be off to a great start. And your underwater photography is going to look head and shoulders better than everyone else's.